Hey guys, today I wanted to make a little video to talk about potty training. Um, it's one of the most common things that I get asked about. Um, I get messages all the time. A lot of times that's the first reason puppy owners reach out to me because they just can't get a handle on potty training. So I wanted to go over a few things that have helped probably hundreds of clients at this point, not to mention all the other people out there who have hired other dog trainers. You know, I'm not the only one. And, um, and I didn't learn this myself, you know, I saw other resources, so I think, uh, I think this will help you out. First things first is health. Um, it, it depends on what we're talking about, maybe the age of the dog, things like that. But, um, a lot of times when I get a call from say a puppy owner and they say, well, my, I will take my puppy out. And then I'll bring him in and five minutes later, he's peeing. And then before I can get that spot cleaned up, he's peeing again, you know, and whenever I hear like that, like it's that often, most likely you've got a urinary tract infection. And in that case, they really can't help it. They're uncomfortable. Um, you know, they, they, at no point does your dog have a thought in their head that, Hey, I'm going, well, no a puppy. They're not going to be like, Oh, I'm going to pee right here in just a second. Like they just do it when they need to right uh the the call you know they get nature calls and there we go so uh whenever they're uncomfortable like that they're just going all the time because it's like oh i feel that you know pee and then you know and it just keeps happening so because they're kind of trying to relieve that um discomfort so that requires a vet you gotta go to a vet usually most vets write you a real mild antibiotic cleared up no time flat you'll be good to go um some dogs um i don't know the names but like some some dogs have uh different things like genetic maybe defects i'm not sure if that's the right way to describe it but like things about them physically that make uh urinary tract infections occur more frequently so i would say if like you have to go to your vet a second time for something like that i would maybe ask your vet about that because there may be some simple procedure I, i'm just not a vet but you know there may be some simple procedure or something they could do that would help you um keep that from happening in the future um <clears throat> next is cleanup right and uh you might be like well that's not training at all and yeah you're right i mean but the thing is, like, puppies are going to have accidents. I tell people, if people come to me before they get a puppy, which isn't the norm, but they probably should. So if you're thinking about it, come to me. But um, if they talk to me before they get a puppy, the first thing I tell them is like, okay, get in your head right now. Your puppy's going to pee in your house. 100%. At least once. You know, like, it's, it's going to happen. It's just part of having a dog. Um, it's probably going to happen multiple times. It's probably going to piss you off a few times. So just just keep that in mind like if you if you have it in your head that like okay i don't ever want my dog to pee in my house it's just not realistic it's just not going to happen if you have it in your head it will happen but we're going to get past it that's a little bit more realistic that's a little bit more doable um so the the cleanup super important and the way i like to do that is with some type of enzymatic cleaner a lot of the new um well, pretty much any of the brands that make enzymatic cleaners, a lot of times they'll call it bioenzymatic. It's the same deal. Um, base, this, I, this is the base, most basic way that I can describe it is that whatever it is in urine that dogs can smell that will survive even bleach. Okay, maybe I should, maybe I should cover that real quick. So a lot of people will tell me, that they uh okay my puppy goes uh dry it up and then i spray a little bit of bleach and i rub it down and great it's clean right yes it's definitely clean i mean the germs are gone right but um unfortunately our dogs nose well for it depends on what we're talking about but fortunately or unfortunately our dogs noses are much better than that and they can smell in layers right so they can smell pee and bleach and another way to think about it is like a cheeseburger right uh, let's think of like, you know, a great cheeseburger, all the toppings, all the dressings, all the everything like that's, mm, that's my jam. All right. I smell a cheeseburger, right? That's just like one smell to me. I'm like, Oh, somebody's, somebody's making cheeseburgers, you know, uh, put your puppy or your dog smells 
bread, meat, lettuce, tomato, onion, pickle, ketchup, mustard, all of it, right? Like they, they smell the levels to it and they know, like, like maybe they don't think like, hey, this is all the individual parts, but they can pick apart the individual smells. So whenever you clean like that, they can still smell it. And here's the problem is if, especially males, but I think this is true of all dogs, if they can smell that little bit of pee in a spot, they're more incentivized to go back over it, to kind of freshen it up, you know? So, um, I like to use enzymatic cleaners and what that will do is take away what your dog can smell, right? So it just, um, it's got enzymes in it that gets rid of whatever that is so that it is not only clean, but also, you know, scentless. So, um, that, that's my most important tip as far as when accidents happen. That's, that's just, you know, you got to clean up good. You got to keep them from being able to smell that after the fact. If you have my suggestion, if you're a, in any way able to afford it, or if you can do something like this, um, if you've got carpet and your dog's already had a lot of accidents before you find this video, uh, do your best to get a carpet cleaner, maybe a professional cleaning service, or if you can afford that, or, uh, you know, a rug doctor like Walmart's around here, have them, um, you know, put some of that enzymatic cleaner in it. Uh, we've got like just some, you know, whatever home carpet cleaner that we inherited from somebody, you know, like, so like, you know, just use that, you use something and get that stuff out of the carpet. Cause that, that can stick around and really kind of bite you in the butt, uh, long term. after that, uh, get them on a schedule, right? So I, if I brought home a puppy today, which ain't going to happen, <laughs> my dog's crazy enough right now. Uh, if I brought home a puppy today though, I'd probably take that puppy out every 30 minutes. Now, and let, at eight, let's say, let's just take the average puppy. Let's just say a golden retriever puppy. You know, most people have doodles or something. Most people have large breeds. So let, like, let's just take an average size puppy. Let's just say for the heck of it, a golden retriever puppy, but you insert breed here, whatever you want. All right. Probably every 30 minutes, they're not going to need to go every single time, but maybe two out of three times they do, right? So I'll just go ahead and take them out, right? And um, I'm going to do that very consistently. And maybe that's day one, all right? Maybe even day two. Day three comes along, I have maybe noticed some patterns. I've noticed that um, they will do the two out of three times, but that third time they don't need to go. Or maybe they've gotten to like every other time. They've kind of figured out like, okay, this guy's going to take me out. Whenever he takes me out, you know, if I pee, he's going to give me a treat. And like, okay, you know, like they're at least in some small way incentivized to go outside. So now they've fell, fallen into some sort of pattern. So they, so I can go and, um, I'm having a brain fart. So I can begin to weed out some of those trips outside, right? So I might switch to every 45 minutes, right? Which kind of cuts cuts my, how many times I'm going out every day by quite a bit, right? Oh, I wish I could stop saying right. Uh, it's probably getting on everybody's nerves. It is mine. Um, so... So maybe that's days three and four and five. Okay. And, and the puppy's going out almost every single time. Well, but may, but maybe I don't think that they had to go or maybe we're having to go outside and they're having to spend a little time outside. Well, then I might go to every hour. All right. Now I've, you know, started going every hour and things are going good. And then I have an accident. Right. So then I'm going to reevaluate. Okay. Was this too long between trips? Um, do I need to take it back to 45 minutes or is it because he just got done playing and drank a ton of water and then ran over here and peed because he had to, um, you know, I just kind of examined like, okay, what just happened? What are, what, what was, what were the precedents that led to this? And if I can determine the cause, I'll decide on that. So I think that kind of gives you an idea. That's my schedule, right? And I'll, I'll do that for as long as I need to to complete the potty training of the dog. 
when I say, now that I've said that, uh, when I say complete the potty training, I personally, just because overkill as everything with a dog with me, uh, I don't consider a dog potty trained fully until they're a year old, no matter what. It's definitely overkill for sure, but I would rather, I'd rather overdo it than underdo it. Uh, I always tell people with Cooper, uh, my favorite trick of all the crazy stuff he does is not peeing in my house. That's my favorite. I love it. Um, and uh, I am very committed to not having pee in my house. So I will absolutely take them out on a schedule for the first year of their life. I, to me, that's just part of having a dog. It just is what it is. I, at no point during that first year am I going to expect them to tell me that they need to go outside. Now, if they begin to tell me, that's great. And maybe maybe if that happens consistently, that's a sign that I don't have to be as diligent about taking them out regularly. But I don't just assume that. I go into this imagining that for a year I will have to take them out on a schedule and cannot trust them to tell me. And then I just go from there. Um, the next part is scheduled meals. This one's pretty simple. Uh, food goes in on a regular basis. Food comes out on a regular basis. Um, generally speaking, and this, this is just something I've picked up over the years. There's probably vets out there that have great TikToks or something that can tell you way better than this. But personally, I like to do, um, I like to do three meals a day up to about 16 weeks. So roughly four months, right? Excuse me. Then I like to do two meals a day up until about a year. Um, depends on the breed. Uh, depends on the dog. If they're not uh, a chow hound, you know, all my dogs I've ever had have been big eaters, you know, super food motivated. Um, it's probably due to me doing the scheduled meals and stuff. Uh, so I've never had that happen. But if I ever did a dog or maybe rescued a dog or something like that that wasn't a big eater, uh, I would I would probably stick with that two meals for quite a while. But as quickly as I can or as close to a year as I can, I'm going to go ahead and switch to one meal a day. Uh, I really think that those long periods of fasting are really good for a dog's health. Uh, you know, I had a, you know, Lily, if you've, if you've not checked out that video where I tell her story, I uh, encourage you to do that. You know, she passed away this past December. It still kind of gives me cold chills to talk about. But she... Uh, you know, she was 12 years old, Great Pyrenees mix, right? And that doesn't happen that much. It's like Great Pyrenees just generally, I mean, I'm sure there's old Great Pyrenees out there, but generally speaking, they don't live to 12. And, uh, you know, she she did. And I, I attribute her health, her entire life, super healthy dog, to, to those long periods of fasting. Now, that's not to say um, I don't train. I don't, you know, maybe throw some treats in there or use a little bit of their kibble or um, I really like to give my dog something to chew and eat every day. Uh, but those things are, they're not, kibble, you know, they're, they're usually, they're not large amounts of kibble if it's kibble. They're not uh, high calorie snacks. Right? It's like meat or something like that usually, you know, um, and it's not, um, and it's not so much that I think it takes them out of that fasting mode. Um, so I, th I think that still, I think that still counts. At least it does for me. Seems, I mean, my dog's, my dog's super healthy. That's, that's my main thing here. And my vet doesn't disagree with me. So great. They probably just don't want to hear me blather on, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, food goes in on a regular basis. Food, food comes out on a regular basis, right? And, uh, next, the next thing would be, uh, punishment, right? And you're probably like, nope out of here i ain't doing that and and that's cool actually what i was gonna say is that uh you know with this for sure with potty training for sure especially puppies i would not suggest any form of what we normally think of as punishment now if you can set up if you want to be technical punishment just means to reduce the frequency of a behavior the the you know, so if I, if there is some strategy I can use that will reduce peeing in my house, I absolutely will do that. But really what I'm talking about here is more for the average dog owner and, or the above average dog owner, if you're following my pages. And, uh, really what I want to encourage you to think about is like, okay, let's say you're doing everything else right. Everything that I've ever talked about in any other video, you're doing it all right. 
But with potty training, you just really believe that, you know, you got to um, really fuss at or whatever, uh, you know, whoop them or whatever. A everything, I would say, if you're rubbing their nose in it, you probably ain't following my page. That's crazy. But, like, if you're... If you're doing anything else, like, okay, I get it. Like, you know, I grew up that way. Well, I grew up rubbing their nose in it, but that's just not appropriate. Do th Stop that immediately if you're doing that is the moral of the story. But uh, everything else, like, you know, if you're tapping them on the nose, you're tapping them on the butt, or you're doing whatever. Okay, all right. Let's examine that for a minute. So your dog is inside with you, and they pee right in the middle of the living room floor. And you say... Fluffy, stop that. And you go over and you tap him on the butt, right? Just a, just a little boop. Okay. Well, now, next time that they need to pee and they're in the house, remember, we can't trust them to tell us because they don't know that they're about to pee. But, like, now this happened. Now we're building up to it and they, they know they're uncomfortable. Like, something's about to happen. Maybe they don't understand that it's about to be pee. But they're just like, okay, I got to do that thing. And then they got to look at you like, they got to do that thing again? And then you do that thing again. You you know, you go, hey, and you tap them or whatever. What are they going to do the next time, right? They're probably going to run behind the chair or somewhere where you can't see. And then you're going to notice the puddle later. And then maybe you'll do it, but maybe not. Maybe you understand enough to know that a consequence within three seconds is the only thing that counts, right? So then... You go outside, right? You're still doing the, the regular schedule, but you take them outside and they don't want to go. You know, maybe they're paying attention to you or maybe they're just scared to actually relieve themselves in front of you because they know you'll get on to them. We would look at that and go, well, that's weird. We're outside now. But how's your dog supposed to know? All they know is that you're still there, right? So that's usually when I get called with like older dogs that people have tried using a lot of punishment with for potty training is that the dogs have just learned that okay when my person is around i can't do it so now i just go hide so now you're still getting all the pee in your house and none of the results that you want so my suggestion would be don't worry about that stuff like potty training is pretty simple it just takes time you know you just have to be patient so um just just roll with me here give my give my ways a shot just just try this out all right Next is patience, which I kind of touched on anyway. It, it takes time. You know, um, they have to mature, right? So the difference between the bladder of an eight-week-old puppy and a one-year-old dog is vastly different. Um, you know, it's, it's able to hold it for hours and hours. Uh, you know, like, it's not... They probably know just before they need to do it now. Might even be in that stage of maturity where they purposefully seek out places to go pee, like marking, that kind of thing. So it's a big, big difference. Big difference mentally, physically, all of that. Um, then uh, next would be illness. So if they are sick, they can't help it. And I think it's about as simple as that. Uh, you know, Lola, three, probably three, four weeks ago, um, she had diarrhea. And uh, she did not have it during the day. And then it, I'm sitting here and, you know, I'm laying in my bedroom, you know, me and my wife are sleeping and you know dog starts whining she wakes me up and i'm sitting there listening to her. i'm like oh my god and i'm thinking she's just making racket but she doesn't stop she's very persistent about it and lola's never not she's had a few accidents all due to me you know just not paying attention since she came to us and uh but but she's not that's not her jam like she that's not a problem that we have right so she uh she she keeps on making noise and I'm like, okay, something's up. Let me, let me give this a shot. And I take her outside. Guess what? Now your little puppy's probably not going to know to do that. They're just going to wake up and just do it. And then you're going to wake up to a disgustingly covered puppy. Probably. Uh, they can't help that. You know, they're just ill. And I think, I think probably everybody listening to this is going to understand that. Like your, your pup, your puppy, your dog, whatever. Like when they're ill, they can't help it. You know, like they get an upset stomach. They get, uh, a urinary tract infection they get whatever and they do this so it just is what it is and lastly uh, I just want to touch on old age now I mentioned Lily my dog um, you know she reached the ripe old age of 12 
and uh, very blessed for all those years. And, um, you know, I'm glad that I didn't have to see um, things like I've seen other dogs go through. I would have loved to have her longer, and I would have, I would have, you know, done whatever I had to do to keep her here. But um, a lot of dogs, once they get past a certain age, just, just can't hold their bladders anymore or can't, you know, keep from pooping in your house. And, um, you know, it's part of old age, unfortunately, uh, much like people. And uh, I think at that point, you know, rather than any type of training, we need to prioritize their comfort. And, uh, you know, we need to think about it as comfort even possible. And then you get into, like, deeper questions that maybe are too personal for me to discuss in a public forum uh, but I can pose those questions and you know you can think about it so like at what point if your dog is incontinent is it time to for them to go you know and I, I think about that kind of thing a lot because I'm gonna have dogs my whole life you know I'll never be without a dog and I'm sure at least one will get there and uh, it makes me incredibly sad you know but uh, but we're blessed to have all the years that we do get, all the years between those two events, between eight-week-old puppy that pees everywhere and really old dog that is, you know, near the end. And we get all that space in between. So I want you to think about that. When your puppy's peed in your house for the 18th time this week, and you think you're going to have to throw your favorite rug away. And, you know, they're biting your kid's ankles and they're shredding your shoes and they're doing all this. That stuff happens for this long of their whole life. And you get to be there for every minute. Right? And uh, I think that... I, th I think that perspective... It may not help in the moment, but I think it will help you... Um, you know, empathize with your dog a little bit and enjoy them a little bit more. So I hope this helped out, guys. Uh, this is basically uh, my normal um, $50 online session when people just really want my personal help with, with potty training. Maybe this is just what I'll recommend from now on because I like to make money, but I like to help people too. So like, you know, I think this is a good resource to share this with your friends. Uh, put, put this in like puppy groups or something, you know, I don't know, like just, just let people know, like this is, this is how to do it. This is one way to do it. I'm sure there are others, but I think this is a solid way to do it. And it's proved itself hundreds of times. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you'll do all the things like rate, share, subscribe, uh, whatever, you know, like just, just, you know, let people know about it and, uh, help me out while you're at it. And, uh, thanks guys.